magic screen trap for the spotted lanternfly for this red maple tree. And you might not be able to see it, but our native red maples have slightly smaller leaves. They're not red now, like the Japanese, but they have they turn bright red in the fall and they had an early red flower. Also the silver maples that are more indented where the middle part can come down below. They're big hosts for them. They hatch out May, June, they're on them. And then they come back to them August through the fall and they lay eggs way up high. So if you haven't trapped a maple tree yet, you can still do it and prevent the fall amount of bugs going onto them. So I have some aluminum screening. I got 36 inches in length, but I cut it in half. So then I had double the amount. Uh, and you can get them from your hardware stores. We like the black or charcoal screening. And what's so simple about this method is you just put it around the tree and cut a little overlap. It doesn't matter uh, how much, uh, if it's a bigger tree with a lot of cracks, you're gonna put more overlap, but I've just cut it out, that's it. Now the hardest part is to attach a cup that's going to lead them into their trap. So now I fold the screening in half and I get a scissor I cut one about an inch, but it's not exact, about an inch cut down the middle. And then at an angle, one more cut. So now I open it up and you have two flaps here. This is where I'm gonna attach my cup. My cup is a clear plastic, this is a solo cup, but you could probably get other ones. And I've cut out the bottom, which you can do with an X-Acto knife. And I've put a teeny strip of duct tape because we noticed that with these slippery cups, some were slipping down. With the little track, it can help them stay in the cup. Now, this is the hardest part. I put the cup between the two flaps, and then I have some flashing tape. You buy a big roll from the box stores for $20, and I've used it for an entire year. I cut a few strips. Here's a little piece to put one flap on, a little piece to put the second flap on. Now, I'm gonna make a seam I'm gonna put a seam down, and this, this is the great thing about the aluminum screening, it just folds. So I'm gonna fold both sides a seam, and this is another spot for the lantern flies to get caught. So I'm gonna fold it on the other side too, all the way down. Okay, now, to really attach the cup better, I'm going to pull this down, and I'm gonna put a strip of flashing tape Flashing tape holds out the best with the weather. I'm gonna put it across one way, and now I'm gonna to come to the other side and put it out the other way. And now you can see I can hold it by the cup and the flashing tape is all around to keep it secure. Now I'm going to put it up on the tree. And the point is we're gonna secure it around the tree. Lantern flies like to climb up so we are going to put it at a slant where the bag with the cup, and I'll put the bag on at the end, is at the highest point. I'm going to put a pin, and we got these special long shank office pins, that aluminum pins that go longer, that we think work really well. And one other thing, where there are cracks in the bark, we have, we used to use tool, uh, we used to use batting material, and there's some concerns about polyester batting material holding water against a tree, so now, we found some tool and I get strips, little strips of tool. And what I'm gonna do is just tear. Wonderful thing about tool is it tears. It tears real simple. I'm going to pin in the screen and where there are cracks in the bark and in something like a walnut tree, there are even deeper cracks. I'm going to get a little strip of my black tool and I'm gonna stuff it in the cracks as I go. But first I'm going to really secure it well right at the cup and I'll come back with the hammer at the end and secure it better. But now as I go down the tree and I'm putting my trap at an angle, I'm going to pin with these long shank office pins. You could do a staple gun as well, whatever you have, whatever works. You could use the office uh, pins, but they do seem to come out more often because they're shorter. So I'm going to go all the way down this tree again, notice, with this tool, I'm just putting it in and putting a pin in the deep groove areas. Now, I'm actually gonna stop and go to the other side because I want it to be fairly even.
Okay, so here we are on this side. I'm gonna put a pin just as I go and I can come back and hammer them or staple gun them. Again, I'm stuffing the tool in the cracks because the lantern flies are gonna climb up and if they can find a crack to get out of, they will, and we've seen them pop out. That's how we realized uh, we needed to put a stuffing in. And it's all we learn as we go. This is, there's not one exact way to do this. And somebody said insulation material can also be a stuffing material. We're almost at the back. Yeah, so now it's gonna be roughly about even. Now notice I had a little extra and that was just the right amount extra. Now I'm gonna come back later and stuff the stuffing in, but notice I put it together at the end. Now I didn't, I could have done this beforehand. Um, put a seam, just fold the seam under. Again, it's just a spot if lantern flies fall down, it's another spot for them to get caught in. And now I'm gonna to come to the end with a simple office stapler. And I'm going to staple the ends together. So I'm gonna first do it at the very bottom to keep it flared out. And then I'm just gonna put my stapler up higher and staple it. Now, really, the, I'm gonna stuff this later with a little more tool, which I have here. I can show you how I can come back and stuff it after the fact. If some of it gets taken out, we found the white tool the squirrels seem to wanna to take to their nest. So it's actually a little better, and I think it looks better with the black. So that's it. This is pretty well secured. We can always come back and put more in. And I can hammer, I can hammer the pins in. And people said, aren't the pins gonna hurt the tree? They're not gonna hurt the tree as much as the hundreds of lantern flies eating every bit of this tree. They suck the sap when they're older, and right now, when they're nymphs in the spring and summer, they're up way high eating the leaves and the stems of the young growth. Okay, so there, everything is secured. We're almost done. The last thing is to get a bag to catch them in. So we're hoping the lantern flies are gonna climb up. They love coming to maple trees and others. They're gonna come up to the bag and I'm checking. It looks like it's secured. This is the most important part to check. We've seen pins come out and there's a hole here so they can spend the time up the trap and pop out. We don't want that. So you must maintain a trap and check that. Then you can put a bag over. Some people use Ziploc bags. You can do that. They're hard to put on. You have to get a rubber band and the rubber bands can melt and they stink and you have to change them. We discovered to, uh, Organza Party Favor bags that we buy online, the big size, and all you do is tie it. And then if it's full or smells or a stain, you untie it and replace it. And then we hang it off to a side so that the highest point, the bugs love to climb to the highest point. And then if they drop down, they're gonna drop down in the bag. And we can show you pictures of dead lantern flies at the bottom of the bag. You can use any color. We think the black blends in better. And we tested a couple next to each other, black and white, and they seem to have the same number. That's it, that's all there is to it. I hope you can build your own spotted lanternfly trap on your tree.